In the world of eBay selling, there are returns and then there are item not as described returns. The two are handled very differently by eBay and one leaves you, your store, and your eBay livelihood wide open to scammers. Most eBay sellers will tell you to cut your losses. There is nothing you can do on an item not as described case. But today I'm going to tell you the step-by-step -step process and exactly what I did that took an item not as described return decision and reversed it in my favor to have nearly $200 dollars credited back to my account. So I sold a sewing machine recently for full price to a buyer in Arizona. The buyer paid $99 plus $30 shipping, which meant all in they were at $129 for the new home Mylock 334D. So the buyer receives the machine and immediately sends me a message asking why in the world I sent them a used machine. I'll give you guys just some of the highlights of the conversation. The buyer says, if the serger is new, why is it so filthy? Why would you send me something that's dirty that I have to clean? Why is there no manual with this new serger? So right away, I send the buyer back a message and I said, what would give you the idea that the serger is new? The listing describes it as used. The pictures show thoroughly the condition. This is in very good condition, but it is used as the listing states. The photos even show the writing on the unit, which I'm showing you guys now in these photos. Knew this unit would be over $500. Like it's clear if you're buying this for $99, it's not a brand new Mylock. I send another message right away. Hey, I've attached photos of the listing describing this unit as used. And you guys can see I have described it in the listing as used, in the item description as used. Like everything says that this is a used unit. And these photos again show masking tape where the previous owner had uh, noted things on the machine. Like there's actual writing on this machine. Um, even if you're not going to read the description, even if you didn't read the item specifics, just going through the photos would lead you to believe you're buying a used Used machine but clearly not in the case of this particular buyer so immediately a buyer does not message me back she opens up a return case and has noted the reason for the return item not as described like kiss of death um, if there's one thing you do not want a buyer to do it is open a case item not as described now I'll be honest with you I've never had this happen erroneously for no good reason I'm not a perfect eBay seller so while I don't accept returns like on occasion I have missed a flaw in an item and a buyer send me a message and you know it's clear I go back in the photos oh my gosh it was right there I didn't see it like I'm going to make it right because I want to be the type of seller that I also want to deal with on eBay but I've never had a buyer just outright try to scan me like this and say an item was not as described. So while I have heard that you can't fight an INAD and it's always going to result in a return for the buyer, I didn't understand exactly what that meant just yet. So we started to have a conversation in the return and this is how that went. Very first message that the buyer sends in the return. Buyer has requested a return. This serger was advertised as new. However, when it arrived, it is filthy. I swung the side door open and the sewing thread and dirt fell out as did a gold colored nut that that concerns me it is filthy has no manual has a twin needle in it and one of the needles is broken how does this happen if an item is new so clearly her biggest complaint is that this is a uh, used machine when I advertised it as new and she goes on to say that it's filthy but again I'm showing you guys the photos of the listing and there was nothing filthy about this machine I actually spent $20 and really paid up for this machine so I messaged back the serger is clearly listed as used the photos are plentiful and detail the condition including writing on the unit the word new in the title refers to the model of this unit it is called the new home mylock 334d i describe this unit as used it is used everything in this listing details the unit as used i do not accept returns and that is also detailed in my listings i could look for a manual to send you if that would help so a few things to note here um the returns and messages with the buyer is no place to get argumentative it is no place for anything other than facts do not state your opinion here do not um, try to talk down to or degrade the buyer uh, the fact that a buyer wants to be you know wants to try to scam you should not cause you to lower your level of professionalism of customer service like if your level what you expect of yourself is up here do not let a difficult buyer drag you down here okay 
So here is where the buyer um, really starts to A, grasp at straws and B, starts to disregard the advice I just gave you guys and that is to stick, you know, keep things strictly professional. So she messages me back, I understand you don't accept returns and now I know why. I will give you... I will give you, she is admitting here, I will give you that the ad stays used. I can see that now. So she's admitting that it says it's used and she's also admitting she didn't see that before. However, your ad said nothing about nut falling out or whatever white plastic pieces broken and came from inside the machine. I would never have purchased it had you been honest and listed it as needing work repairs. There is no way for me to know where the nut came from and what the plastic piece is that needs to be replaced. And I would never have sold shipped anything so filthy. Again, showing you guys how clean this is, okay? I believe it's covered by eBay's return policy. I have spoken with them so they are aware of how you conduct yourself and and the deceptive advertising you use. At this point, it's clear. I don't know. This lady's name is probably Regina, judging by her username, but it's clear that she's a Karen, right? So she has spoken to the manager. She has made them aware that I am deceptive. <laughs> and um, so she continues on. And now that we've established that the machine was clearly advertised as used and she admits okay, I just didn't see that. She grabs onto another straw to try to get a return. And she says, I just compared the serger I received to the photos you posted. The machine I have is not bright white like the one in your photos. Again, deceptive. Okay, so I messaged her back and I said the machine pictured, which is the machine you received, has a serial number on the back of it attached photos for your comparison. This is the exact machine in the listing. So another little tip there, piece of advice, if you're selling any type of like expensive electronic or anything that has a serial number or any type of ad identifying characteristic, take a picture, put it in the listing. You know, that way it, she couldn't argue that I didn't send her the exact machine in the pictures, but she tried. She tried. When used didn't work uh, versus new, she went for this isn't the same machine. That is the last message that I received from the buyer. Um, while this return is still open, the uh, buyer now has the opportunity to step in and ask eBay to help and actually open a case, which she does immediately. As soon as I see she has asked eBay to step in, I call eBay right away. Like guys, I was in my car trying to pick up my, my kids from school and I still dropped everything I was doing. I'm on the phone in the car with eBay. I get a representative who reads through the case and everything. And by the time I am off the phone with him, he can confirm that she already has a shipping label. It did not matter if I called them or not. The representative basically explained to me that with an item not as described case, um, it, the details are irrelevant. You are not going to get an individual at eBay to review the return details or the case details, the listing details, the photos, the messages, anything on an item not as described case. That is not eBay's policy. And that's the part that, like I say, I had always heard people talking about that, but I didn't take it. I don't know that I didn't take it seriously enough. I didn't understand what they were saying. I thought surely eBay was still reviewing these. Absolutely not. They are not reviewing item not as described cases. If that is the reason why a buyer returns an item as item not as described and they escalate it to a case, then 100% of the time, eBay is going to say, here, take your money. It is their policy as part of their buyer protection program. Basically, a bot on, at eBay is going to um, flag it, item not as described, and as soon as the return is escalated to a case, the buyer automatically gets issued a return label. Like, no one at eBay is independently verifying any of the details of this case ever. I, ha I felt like you guys had to have a little bit of a backstory on this to fully appreciate and understand the step-by-step -step process and exactly what happened. And here's where you need to start taking notes, okay? So number one, I did not accept the return. A lot of eBay sellers will say if the item is item not as described, you may as well go ahead and accept it because it's going to be a fault to your account if you don't and they are 100% always going to get a return. Part of that is true. They will 100% always get a return. But just imagine if I had accepted the return based off of that, then everything else I'm about to tell you would be irrelevant and eBay would say you accepted the return. That is just, in my opinion, how it would happen. Representatives would not be speaking to me and telling me what to do and how to report this buyer. Um, they would say you accepted the return. Like you seem to have no problem with it. I had a huge problem with it. So step number one would be not to accept the return, even if it comes in as a return 
return request for item not as described, do not accept the return. Now I will tell you if it, if it turns out against your favor, then yes, it's going to be a strike on your account. So choose the lesser of two evils. And for me and for this, you know, larger than normal sale, it was absolutely worth taking the risk here. Um, I did not accept the return. So I guess that would be step one in my process of what I did to get my money back. The eBay representative that I spoke to as soon as I got on the phone and she had escalated it to a case gave me what I feel like is the most important piece of information here. He told me as soon as we hung up the phone, I needed to get straight to my desktop and report this buyer. They needed to be reported for misusing the eBay return policy and uh, more so item not as described as a case. So I again was super, super cordial and kind and polite to the eBay representatives on the phone. They, they were not the ones independently making this decision. They were not independently trying to take $129 plus return shipping from me. Uh, they are there to help you. And I'm telling you that had I not been nice to this guy, he had no reason to tell me um, that as soon as I got off the phone, I had to go file a, like a complaint and a report against this buyer. So while I was on the phone with him, I asked him, I said, you know, we just ordered an outdoor sectional off of eBay uh, for our patio area. You're telling me that if I just decided I didn't want this anymore, even though they don't accept returns, I could say item not as described, cite any erroneous reason in the world, and I'm going to get my money back. And he said, essentially, yes. If you're reported, then after like three times of doing this, you're banned from eBay. So it is imperative that you go report her. It is also imperative for your case and any further seller protection we have that you report her. So guys, that is one of the most important steps is to go report the buyer. I would also suggest you calling eBay like I did because um, later on in the case, they already had report of me calling in about this particular case, about this buyer. Um, so there was already like a record of this being a, a problem in a situation. So the super kind and helpful eBay rep that I had said then I needed to wait and first of all wait and see if the buyer would even actually send in the return because you know like probably seven times out of ten they don't even mail the item in. But it was clear to me that she was ready to fight about this so that she was probably going to mail it in and she did. Um, the representative told me that when I got it in I needed to call eBay again. So I waited for the return and sure enough it showed up and guys when it showed up this 30 pound sewing machine had a US PS label on it more than a cubic foot and 30 pounds. I don't even want to know what the price of this label that was clearly going to be charged to me was going to be. That is how it was returned to be. And apparently in speaking with eBay representatives after this, you can actually decide if you send out your label. I was never given a choice, but they told me that it's in your settings that you can choose on a return if the buyer has to wait for your label. And I guess that still holds up an item not as described returns. I'm not really sure. I just, I just can't imagine again how much that was going to be charged to me and had I not fought this that would have been additional money on top of my $129 which brings us close to $200 surely. So when the machine arrived I recorded me opening it um, just in case that would help me which the eBay representative never needed to see that. It was actually not helpful at all but hey I have it for this video and for you guys. So when I got it in I opened it immediately and I can't believe that this person had this machine for only a few days in their house. This mattress pad that I use to um, ship very fragile items absolutely reeked of nicotine, tobacco, like cigarette odor. It was terrible and the machine smelled the same way. It was literally in her home for a few days you guys and like I don't know. Anyway, there was no care whatsoever in repackaging this item. She just kind of threw the padding in there and then the um, cardboard blocks that I had in there to fill the void, she just kind of threw those in on top also. And while we're speaking about throwing things in, I, I feel like some of this she may have just emptied her dustpan into here. Again, showing you guys the super clean listing photos versus what I received, like it's night and day difference. To add a little insult to injury, she included a baggie full of trash um, as well well as a nut and you guys will see here in a second where that nut actually came from um, where I believe that it came from anyway but yeah the machine is in terrible condition so I set it down um, the doors and drawers are like not functioning properly you can't even open this front drawer and um, again it, there's just like all kinds of random trash and such a terrible odor that if this machine was not broken I still would not be able to um, to actually resell it. 
So this particular serger holds four spools of thread and this last one is totally broken off. That is where the nut came from on the bottom, but I cannot get it to actually refasten properly. Um, so somehow she's just completely broken that. And in the original return photo she sent, that was still intact. So I'm thinking at a certain point, and this is just my assumption, perhaps she was worried she might get her return and decided to break a simple part of the machine. But nonetheless, this machine is now broken. It's very, very smelly and I cannot resell it. To tell you guys that I was a little bit upset about this would be an understatement, but business is business. Like if you had a brick and mortar, you're going to have to deal with some people coming in and actually like getting a five finger discount on your items live and in person. Sometimes you're going to get those items back and sometimes thieves will steal. You know what I mean? So, um, online marketplaces are no different. We just have like high tech thieves where, you know, instead of just putting things in their pocket, they have to go to a bit greater lengths. And the, the point of videos like this is to circumvent that as much as possible and tell you guys what I know to try to get your money back. Even if I'm not getting my money back from the buyer in this case, eBay ended up giving me my money back. So after I see that this machine is trash, I am, there's no way that I'm selling this. It smells so bad. I'm probably not even selling it for parts. I call eBay as the original rep told me to. And guys, I was a little bit surprised with this eBay rep actually trying tried to uh, somewhat defend the buyer. So I was really firm with him in presenting the facts, but also remember to be respectful because again, the person that you're talking to on the phone, like it's so totally unfair to unload any of your negative energy or your anger on them. I'm angry with the buyer. I'm not angry with like Joe at eBay. He didn't do this. Joe at eBay also did not put eBay's policy into place that um, automatically accepts INAD requests. Like Joe is here to help me if I will allow him to. And speaking to people with anything but respect is not the way to get them to help you. So I was firm with him and you know when he wanted to kind of like defend the buyer. But again, like speak to people respectfully because they hold the next key that you need. He could either shut this whole thing down because I decided to call and be rude and hateful to him or he could escalate this further and make sure that I have my seller protections in place as well. So like this is business. Just be a nice person. Treat your business like your business. Number five, and if they do not offer this, then ask for it. The eBay rep that I was talking to told me that he would send me an affidavit. This is the affidavit that eBay actually had me sign. So it is called um, the request for eBay money back guarantee. So it'll have your case number and item number. You write your full name and there are three options here and you're supposed to um, choose which one applies that either you received an empty box uh, you received the item back in a condition other than the one it was shipped to you or that the item was not returned to you and stood something of uh, low or no value like if they mailed you back a brick or something like that. So there are only three options here but I feel like this second option um, definitely applies in a lot of cases that I have seen sellers actually giving back half the money. You know, hey it was returned damaged so I only have to give you half. No, I got all of my money back by um, choosing this. So you need to ask for this request for eBay money back guarantee um, affidavit. Anyway, you declare, you know, you are ascertaining, I guess, under penalty of perjury, um, that, that this is true. So don't falsify a document like this, but if one of these options is true, then eBay, eBay money back guarantee does protect you as the seller also. This is a document that is available to you. If the eBay rep that you speak to does not outright offer this, then ask for it. So eBay sent me this affidavit. I printed it. I signed it. I scanned it, uploaded it to their system. And I was told to actually call back, which I did. But the third eBay rep that I talked to when I called back actually said there was no need to call. So I don't know. Call, don't call. If you don't need to call, they'll tell you that you didn't need to. But eBay made a final decision after they received my signed affidavit. The message I received from eBay is that the appeal decision was granted and they would be refunding to my account the $129. I was never charged for the return shipping label and I was refunded the $129 from eBay. Now, did the scammer get to keep her $129? Absolutely. I'm positive eBay did not go back to her and take that money from her. So while that does stink that the scammer got away with the scam, I do at least take some solace knowing that this hardworking eBay seller got her money as well because again, I was returned an item that was unsellable.
I've heard a lot of eBay sellers who would have given you a, the advice that if their item was returned damaged that you could withhold 50% of the um, return amount. And guys, like, don't go that route. Don't accept the return. Don't say, well, if I get back crap, then I'll return 50% of their money. Why would I need to lose $65 to someone that was just trying to scam me? This is the step-by-step -step process that you need to take. Will it work 100% of the time? I'm not saying that it will. The truth is the eBay rep that I spoke to said that this was a one-time courtesy. In all the years I've been selling on eBay, this is the one time I've needed it. The truth is that the majority of eBay buyers are buyers and not scammers. You are going to come out into contact with some people that have pretty loose morals when it comes to um, eBaying and scamming people online. That is just the nature of online sales. That is the nature of sales in general. That is really truly the nature of the world. So while it's not a perfect platform, I would never want um, the danger of an INAD case to deter anyone from selling on eBay. Is it going to happen? Yeah, probably. Truth be told, I've been selling pretty aggressively on eBay for six years and I've had probably five, um, if I'm being generous, cases where I just felt like the buyer was outright dishonest and most of those I've been able to work out something or it's been a small enough dollar amount that it really didn't matter. This one was a big amount and I feel like eBay stood by me on this. Um, now, they're only going to stand by you though if you go through the proper channels and if again you are not a jerk to anybody. So I hope you will share this video if you found it helpful. Remember that there's always something you can do. You should at least try to stick up for your business. Um, I so appreciate you guys for watching this. God bless you and remember especially if it means sticking up for it. Treat your business like your business.